All right, team, a quick review of how to use the isofluorine anesthesia machine, uh, how to turn it on, how to turn it off, how to change the oxygen cylinder, and how to fill the uh, vaporizer. So the basic parts are the oxygen cylinder itself, that green tank, this key that is used to turn uh, the valve on the tank open or closed, this uh, pressure uh, um, a meter here, and the smaller adjustable pressure meter here, and the vaporizer. So the way to turn it on is to first crack open the tank using the key. It's a typical lefty loosey turn, and you'll see as soon as you turn it on that the pressure uh, meter registers a good well, in this uh, moment, half tank or so of uh, oxygen pressure. Turn the key a good 180 degrees as well to open it up so it's fully opened. And that will then allow the oxygen to flow through that tube up into the adjustable flow meter. We usually set this at about half a liter. It's a lefty loosey turn again. And you can see these lower numbers are decimals perhaps if it's not too blurry. Uh, if you go uh, higher, it's uh, to one, two, three, four, and then six liters per minute. That's much too much in the way of flow rates of oxygen. So we set it at about half a liter per minute, and that allows oxygen to flow into the uh, isofluorine vaporizer. And that essentially percolates uh, the oxygen uh, through liquid isofluorine, which you can see here, um, perhaps somewhat you can see it, uh, there's a fluid level in, uh, in uh, this little window, uh, which represents the level of isofluorine. You never wanna put it over that white line, put it somewhere in the level of the full word. Um, and that will uh, be our reservoir of isofluorine. We turn on the isofluorine by pushing down this little uh, key here and then taking it from the off position into the numbered percentages. Typically when we anesthetize an animal we put it up to about four percent or so. You'll hear it click into place and that uh, is the percentage of isofluorine that is then being blown out of this tube going into the jar where the rat will be placed. Best to uh, uh, keep it upright until the uh, tube is in the little key slot so that the rat doesn't make his great escape by jumping right through that hole. So typically eight minutes at 4% uh, anesthetizes a rat, sometimes a little more is needed. Um, when you go to take the rat out, first thing to do is take the tube and you put it into the blue connector here so that the anesthesia flows through that blue tubing underneath the table of the nose cone. Um, turning it off is just the reverse. You shut off the vaporizer, turning it to zero and having that nice click. Turn off the adjustable flow uh, regulator here, the flow meter, and then finally tighten up the key at the top of the oxygen. So now we leave some pressure trapped uh, in this and that can, you know, can be purged simply by pushing that button there and letting it loose. The way to fill the um, uh, isofluorine tank uh, is by uh, undoing this little stopper, this metal stopper, and then pouring the isofluorine um, straight into this little container. The isofluorine is being kept up here there it is in that jar and in these boxes there are more jars uh, you keep these uh, tightly closed when uh, they're not in use and simil similarly after you pour uh, your isofluorine into the tank be sure to put the metal stopper back into place and tighten it up good and tight now when you when you're filling this tank you want it to be in the off position um, not at zero the zero still has some air bubbling through it. Um, 
you want it off. Otherwise, there's air still blowing, or I'm sorry, oxygen still blowing through the isoflurane, and with this open, it'll start blowing out and splattering all over. So keep that nicely tightened. Isoflurane is very volatile. Um, volatile in the sense of moving into the gaseous phase, so it evaporates very quickly um, if you leave that open. Now, in terms of changing the oxygen tank, um, this green cylinder, uh, we are going to have a, at least one spare over here against the wall. We'll probably get another one uh, for your practice week. But the way you're going to need to change this cylinder when uh, it's empty is by, number one, I'll have to support the bottom of it with my foot here so I can record this. Uh, you undo this, I'll have to get rid of the key at the top so it's out of the way. Side. You undo this um, screw piece here and it removes that pin that sticks in this side of the uh, valve at the top of the tank and then it uh, slides out and drops down. And you can see right there, there are two posts. Those two posts connect into the tank in those two holes under the larger hole. The larger hole is the oxygen outflow. And it's those two posts that have to align on the new tank when you reinsert it. On the other side is a notch right there. This is actually where they fill the tank. It's another, it's another valve into the tank. But this is a notch that will align with this uh, pin, the screw pin, when you reinsert. So. Again, taking our tank, looking for those two holes, and supposing it's a new one. Sometimes this uh, chrome uh, top to the tank uh, is covered with a piece of plastic. You'll have to rip that loose. But you take uh, those two pins uh, and align it. Slip it in and slip it onto those two pegs. Those, uh, so I've been calling them posts, those two posts there. And then tighten the screw behind it so that it wedges the tank in place and if you're quick you can do this even while the rat is anesthetized um, best to close the tank and then open the new one after it's inserted you'll know it's time to uh, refill the tank once this valve here gets uh, very solidly into the red zone at least half of the way through the red zone um, that's probably a time to start certainly keeping an eye on it um, and then planning to replace it ideally between uh, rats uh, during the practice week. Um, each rat you probably shouldn't be using for more than 30 minutes. Uh, even when the uh, oxygen cylinder is in that red zone, you still probably have a good hour or so of oxygen left. So uh, I'll leave instructions also on where to take the empty cylinders to get replacements if you need them, but three tanks, I think for a week, should do. Good luck.